down. Okay, we are on. Great. Yay. Good evening, boys and girls. <laughs> Welcome to Ask the Unicorn or The Way of the Unicorn, formerly known as Ask the Unicorn, but we still have all of the features of Ask the Unicorn. For those of you that have just joined us, I am Ahura Z, and uh, this is Kazi. Hello. My stalwart, really tall person. <laughs> Not really. Yeah, my chairs. You. Oh, well. I think it's the floor. My yeah, chairs are old. Back. No, you can you can be tall. It's cool. Yeah, but uh, we are looking forward to a good show. I hope that you all have had a wonderful week to begin with, even though it's just kind of dreary and cloudy today. We've had a couple of wonderful days, and now I guess the chemtrailers out there just that were trying to make it rain all week will settle for the second part of the week. And uh, if I can find a way to stop them, <laughs> I'm going to, <laughs> you know, just to let you all know. Um, so tonight uh, we will be talking about wind magic, as I uh, promised some people last week we will go into. And I brought a couple of my artifacts with me that uh, I use in my regard of the wind. And I hope that I can, by the end of the show, have you all have a new perspective on the elements and the wind. All right, um, before we get into that, however, I want to talk to you all about some, some things. I've seen some disturbing things on Facebook, and, you know, for those of you that have Facebook accounts, you know that that's not unusual to be disturbed by Facebook. But I'm getting a little tired of a lot of the things that I see on Facebook in regards to this imaginary battle of men against, well, women against men, men against women, and somewhere in between. First off, let me be perfectly clear with you all. Yes, I am a guy. I am 100% guy. Okay? But, does that mean that I agree with guys all the time? No. As a matter of fact, probably 90% of the time I do not. You know? The other percent of the time is just because I feel in the mood. But, I have to say this. I'm, I'm getting a little tired of hearing that you know, it just polarizes people and it rips them apart to hear stuff like women can do it all by themselves. No, you can't. No, you can't. You cannot. I'm. It needs to be said I'm saying it. No, you can't. Just like men can't do it all by themselves. Whoever started that, that, that thing, you know, of saying women can do it all by themselves and we don't need no man and we're a strong woman. Shut up. Just shut up. Okay? Because if you're a strong woman, you would recognize that we need each other. Okay? And you understand that there would be no strong men if there were no strong women. And versa visa. All of that. Okay? I'm just saying, it's just disturbing me how people come up with these funny little things when it comes to manhood and womanhood. You know, and men, by the same token, look, if you're going to be a man, then be a man. Okay? <laughs> That means Enemy. walk like a man, what talk like a man, you know, do some things that are manly. In other words, man up, quit whining about stuff all the time, you know, or whatever that sweepy thing you all do with your hair, quit it. It's not cool. And wearing girls' pants is not cool. Okay, just to let you all know. There's some disturbing things that I just see on Facebook all the time. Another, another disturbing thing that I see on Facebook is when people use children to suit their agendas. Okay, If they can't convince anybody to do something that they really want them to do, they throw children up in front of them. You know, you can't go pimping out your children just because someone doesn't agree with your point of view. Like I saw this thing, I said, well, they... We couldn't get gun control, so here you go, bulletproof blankets for your kids, and have these kids looking totally disgusted at the fact that someone wanted to take a picture of them wearing this thing. <laughs> it was atrocious. So, of course, I told them, quit using your kids to suit your agenda. You should be ashamed of yourself. And anybody who uses their kids to try to push a point like gun control is stupid, short-sighted, uneducated, and should have their children taken away from them. This is exactly the way that I think about it. If you don't want a gun in your home, then don't get one. But don't fault people that do. Okay? And don't go pushing your, your, your agendas, throwing children up all over the place 
in pictures, having them look utterly disturbed at the fact that you put them in front of a, a put them in front of a camera so that they can push an agenda. If all else fails, let's use children. And let's use a certain type of children because the rest of the children of the world don't really matter. Only this small section of a certain type of child. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. We should be able to, to discuss things like adults. We have a second amendment. And that second amendment is so that we can defend ourselves privately and at large. Especially in the, the, the um, instance of a corrupt government or corrupt town, or if someone wants to come to your house and decides to rob it because they know that you don't have a gun. So, quit using your children. Keep your kids out of it, okay? If you're a real man and you're a real woman, please, quit pimping your kids. That's what I have to say about that, okay? Now, um, that uh, will bring us to some other things. Uh, there's some other things that I, I like to talk about just briefly, and that is when you get a special child, or there's a child that, that is able to think more than one or two things at a certain time, and is able to operate on several different wavelengths, or has a lot of energy, don't go slap a label on them, okay? Tell them that they have ADD and let someone fill them full of, full of drugs. Stop doing that, man. seriously, you know? Give them a break. Maybe they just have a, a really complex machine that needs to be understood. Heck, if you were a child that wanted to do a whole bunch of things and someone made you sit in a, a classroom under a really mean teacher that sat there and read to you four score and seven years ago, how would you feel? Oh, yeah, that's right. We did go through that, didn't we? <laughs> it, didn't, it wasn't cool. And before they started saying ADD, they just told us we were stupid. Okay? So, please... Quit it. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. One more thing. Wow. One more thing. Did you all read this article? It was, it was called to my attention by one of my students um, about these, uh, these two kids that stabbed their, their friend, uh, hoping that they would be able to open a channel line or, or become part of a cult of the Slender Man. Okay. The what? The yeah, Slenderman. These these kids stabbed their friend. Friend brought their friend to the brink of death, stabbing them, deciding which one was going to stab them. <coughs> Wait, they were Twelve years old. Twelve years old. Stabbing each other. No, they were stabbing this one person what? because by killing this person, that mean that that must have meant that the Slenderman would accept them as his disciples. And who is the Slenderman? It's just this fictional character that someone made up that mm -hmm. the, the lemmings of the world believe is actual. It's based on some stupid online game. You know, Slender Man. There's a hundred stories about Slender Man. There's a thousand stories. It's kind of like the Blair Witch Project. Everybody actually believed that there was a Blair Witch. It's just amazing. Like the Blair Witch is any different from the main witch or the uh, Hoboken, New Jersey witch. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so these two kids, and I know exactly what they were thinking. They were thinking they'd be able to get off because they're kids. They got like 65 years in prison for doing stuff like that, you know. And I don't blame the judge at all. I'd, I'd be totally disgusted, you know, because there's so many kids out there that just get away with every single thing because their parents don't get to parent. The parents usually don't even know how to parent, you know. They let the schools parent. Think of this for a second. We have allowed our schools to teach children, our children, about sex education. That's not their job. <laughs> That's your job as a parent to teach your kids about sex. It's your job as a parent to make sure that your kid doesn't go wandering off into a clock tower somewhere taking pot shots at people. It's also your job as a parent to make sure that your kid doesn't go off someplace into a forest and decide to stab their 12-year-old friend thinking that they'll be able to summon the Slender Man. That's your job as a parent. If you can't parent, take your kids to the, give your kids to somebody else because you're not capable. Uh, better yet, if you know that you can't parent, don't even go don't there with kids, okay? Child. Do not, do not have a child. And I know there are a lot of people out there who think, oh, we'll be able to do it because we'll be able to love it and, and cuddle it and squeeze it and Have call it George. Take care of me when I'm old. Yeah, no, 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 don't do that. 
You know, why, why you got to do stuff like that? You know, children, if you get the, the opportunity and the honor to have a child, you're supposed to take care of it, not somebody else. You know, there are people who have, who have kids and they keep trying to do the same thing. Listen, the penalty for having a child, you don't get to do anything, nothing, but take care of that child. That's what you get to do. And if you can't deal with that, don't have a child. And if you did have a child, give the child to somebody who's capable of taking care of it because you're a loser. That's just the bottom line. You give up your life for 18 years when you decide, oh, excuse me, 19 years when you decide to have a child. This is the way that it is. So if you can't deal with that, if you can't tell your buddies, oh, no, I can't go out tonight because I do have a child. Or, I can't, no, I can't smoke pot with you because I have a child. No, I can't go get drunk with you because I have a child. No, I can't go leaping off of a building someplace pretending to do paraquat. Wait, parkour, excuse me. <laughs> if you can't deal with that, then don't have a child. And think, and one more thing, you are not the child's friend. I don't care, all of you parents out there, especially those little annoying people that like to wear their kids right here in front of them, you know, that aren't mothers, you know. If you're a mom, great, you wear your child there, okay, but guys, we're not equipped to do things like that. Give the kid a break, all right, and be a guy, okay? Great, love your child, love your child. She's not exactly a child anymore, but I love her, okay? Love your kid, okay? Like but so, but um, make sure that you're doing the right things for that child, okay? Real simple. And you know what? A lot of things that I see are not the right thing. Not at all. You're not your child's friend. You're the parent. You are the parent, not the friend. Parent, not friend. Parent. Not friend, parent. Give the kids some discipline. That doesn't mean wail the tar out of them, but say no and mean no. Really, and no, there is nobody under the age of 15 that deserves a $500 freaking phone. Just, or to be on Facebook, just to let you know. Okay, so now that I've ranted a little bit, I'm jump, jumping back to my kind, gentle self, somewhat. All right, what have we got for questions before I begin? Oh, we have quite a few questions, actually. Okay. Um, first off, this is episode 36, so thank you all for joining, and it is June the 4th. Fairy tale. Fairy tale. Right. This first question comes to us via Facebook, and I'm really sorry if I mispronounce your name. She's going to. I'm going to, but uh, Indigo, N-D-I-G-O. I don't know if it's short for... Can I see it? I don't know. It's right there. This one. N no, Indigo. N indigo. Yes. I told you. I, I apologized beforehand. Um, anyways, they say... Uh, I would like to know why certain spirits come through with the proposed purpose to just watch. Is that false and they want more? Um, there are some spirits that just come through to observe, to see what you're doing. Or to, to sometimes it's even someone who you used to know that just wants to look and see how you're doing or see what you're doing. It's not that they necessarily want more or less. They just want to be a part of things. You have to remember, they just lose their body. And I say this a lot. They don't necessarily lose their mind. You know, so when you get one that just likes to watch or just wants to watch, perhaps they're, they're just remembering and they kind of want to see what's going on. Or maybe you just happen to be in their, the house that they used to live in and they just want to see what's going on there. You know, sometimes they just pop in and pop out, and other times they are just traveling. And you, you're just someone who's on, your, your place is just a place on the way to their destination. You know, and sometimes they're just waiting to see if you'll ever be able to see them. 
or if someone else can see them because they may have a message to tell you but if you're not able to see them they can't very well de deliver the message so they will wait until something happens or until someone comes along and can communicate with you for them and it's really just as simple as that you know they're the same as we are if you're, you're in a, a foreign country someplace and you really don't know how to speak the language or don't believe that anybody will be able to understand you you will either seek out someone who can interpret or wait until someone comes along that can help you out same thing hope that helps you out okay what have you got next uh, next question is from Amanda, and she says, Hi, Hello. Amanda. And I believe it's Amanda Farrar. <laughs> Hello, Amanda Farrar. She says, Hello, my It's Pete's wife, right? Yes, yes. What's up, Pete? I'm sure he'll type hello. Um, hello, my question to you, sir, is it feels like I have lost my soul. Is it possible to lose one's soul even though you have done nothing to lose it per se? By that I mean no magic or spirit chasing, etc. You have not lost your soul. You're still breathing, just to let you know. However, there may be something that has either partially separated you or even wholly separated you from a part or an aspect of who you are okay as a spiritual being and as a principled being and I can probably help you to find that and then readjust yourself but usually it just means something's out of alignment I no, get we don't know sorry we don't know if it is Amanda Farrar okay apologies you all have to excuse my assistant she's a little dizzy <laughs> But this, the, the answer still goes the same. You know, if you're talking to me right now, you, you haven't lost your soul. <laughs> okay, I, I know that we, we think of a lot of things and we get taught a lot of things and we see a lot of things and we uh, get fed a lot of things. But the soul is one of those things that you're just an aspect of a greater soul. We're all connected in this way. However, uh, life is the common denominator here. You're alive, your soul is intact, you're okay. All right? There could be something that just knocked something a little loose. And usually it's one of your circuits or one of your, um, I don't mean to sound so machine-like, but one of your chakras, if you'd like to put it that way. It's actually an energy center. There are a group of energy centers that can be knocked awry through an experience or something that was done to you or, or something that was said to you or even a uh, sensation that you're going through. So um, if you need help in that area, I can probably rewire you the way that you need to be rewired. So it's okay. You'll be all right. <clears throat> Give me a call sometimes and we'll, we'll sit and find out what exactly happened to you, okay? Hope that helps you. All right, what do you got next? Next question is from Elise. She says, Hi, Elise. Hi. She says, My friend has recently experienced two passings, and she believes that passings happen in three. She's scared because tomorrow. That's she, the myth. She has to go under anesthesia for a surgery. Tell her she'll be fine. Yes, thank you. She wants to know if she's just being superstitious or. No, it's not even superstitious. You know, like, like I mentioned earlier, we humans have this. And, and it's particularly in this country, we're like lemmings. We jump on a bandwagon of something that might sound cool that someone else says, and then someone else spreads it around, and then we think that we're supposed to follow that particular direction, you know, because someone says that. Now, if it does happen in that way, uh, the thing that you do is you just make sure that you have all of those things in order that I've told you about, which basically means, you know, are you eating? Are you sleeping are you is there some physical activity do you have some spiritual inference in your life is there uh things that you need to take care of that need to be taken care of none of us can predict when things like that are going to happen and i told you i don't discuss those things usually so i'm just going to tell you she's fine yeah uh, at least <laughs> did say that she was praying her and her friends were going to be praying for her so good then do what you right. normally do which is be the prayer warrior Awesome. Okay. All right, we have a few more questions. What have you got? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is from Michelle A. Ayot. 
a Bayot. I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. She says, hello there, I have a question about the cat or tiger that matches up to my face. Its eyes meet mine, its nose and mouth meet mine. The cat or tiger is there when I close my eyes. Okay, is that every single time? And if it is every single time, is there an attribute to yourself that perhaps the tiger is trying to show you that you need to be more aware of? And um, that's pretty much it is. We can actually find out if that's one of your totems. And if it is one of your totems, how can we bring it to bear so that you can actually use it? I do know that uh, for a fact that uh, your energy can be adjusted to a point where you're you're feeling more solid and you're feeling stronger about yourself okay and that's something that we will work on just uh, be patient with yourself and understand that there is that that tiger is also the type of entity that will be a policeman you know in the jungle they call the tiger the the policeman of the jungle basically so you kind of maybe need to police some things in your general lifestyle or your your life or on the inside of you and your personality and then you'll see why the tiger is looking directly at at you maybe there's something that needs to be cleaned up a bit okay look and see what it is and don't be afraid of it remember it's your tiger it's the one that looks at you when you close your eyes okay so meet it dead on it's the only way to face a tiger Sorry, I just got a funny thing. Yeah, you can also play the eye of the tiger. That might help you out. Dork. Sorry. The eye of the tiger. I could do the instrumental music, but I will not. Yeah, you, no. I can't sing. Okay, ready for the next question? I am indeed. And uh, we're going to take a minute here. If you want, if you have any questions, uh, you can... Give us a call at 207-347-5686. We love to have callers. Um, apparently, we are experiencing troubles on our phone line because we have somebody trying to give us a call. Who? I don't know. Who's trying to give us a call? Uh, a new listener. Okay, new listener. Uh, anyways, in the meantime, we have another question sure. from Juliana... Macedo. Hello. I would like to ask something. Can dogs <laughs> sense spirits and react to them? Because my dog sometimes keeps staring at some, at something, at something and barking. Yes, they can. Definitely, they can sense spiritual activity. And uh, dogs are a very good thing to have around. I know that a lot of people uh, say, "Well, cats are so spiritual." And that, and that I think all animals are spiritual. You know, we're all spiritual beings. We have a spirit that makes us a spiritual being. However, dogs do have a sense of uh, the paranormal, a really keen sense. So if your dog is looking at something, there is something definitely there. Uh, it may be something uh, infinitesimally small, but that may be physical, but at the same time, it could be an actual spiritual entity. Yes, they do indeed. They always have. They always will. For those people that love cats, cats have the same ability. It's just that most of the time cats look like they're looking at floating bubbles in the sky. But they have the same ability. There's no difference. Cats are not better than dogs. Dogs are not better than cats. They all have the same. You ever talk to a horse? Horses are great to talk to, and yes, they see spirits quite well. So to answer your question, <clears throat> yeah, definitely. If your dog is looking at something, you might see exactly what it is and see if there's something that you could look at at the same time as your dog is looking at at uh, and in the area that he's looking at and see if you can find anything and if you can maybe write it down so you don't forget about it or get a camera out or uh, do something that to see if you can influence that particular thing just don't go over there trying to call something out because something might show up so uh, and if you need help in that area you know where I am I'll be more than happy to help you. You know, thanks for calling in. All right. Wait, she didn't writing in. Call in. <laughs> thanks for writing in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have another question from Kathy Bucklew's daughter, Ava. Hi, Ava. How are you? Ava's a little girl. I know. She says, uh, at times when Ava asks, at times when she feels like she's being watched, she feels something heavy around her. Is this mm. normal? 
that she feels that she's being watched, she feels something heavy. Yes, that's most, most likely the energy of whatever is watching her. Um, well, you know, Kathy, I mean, uh, you, you understand <clears throat> the spiritual nature to a degree. You know, energy is energy, and energy carries with it weight, no matter whether it's a, a tangible being or an intangible being. The energy of that being is going to be there. So if she does feel something that's weight around her or pressure that's around her, uh, see if you can find it as well. You may not be able to see to the same degree that she does, but at least you'll be able to understand. Ask her to describe more of it. Describe how it makes her feel. Uh, describe uh, whether or not she can hear something, or even if she can see something such as a color, a ripple in the air, or energy, or something. Okay. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad, but because it's different, she may be registering it and have a little bit of foreboding. If it's not making her feel bad or scared or anything like that, uh, see if you can investigate a little bit more. And if it is making her feel bad, uh, wherever you are, see if you can have someone come in and perhaps uh, check out the energy in your home. Uh, and th then see if you can find someone that's willing to come there and clean it out. Okay, if you were here, I'd do it myself. Kathy says, I tell her to trust how the energy feels. Yeah, that's good, but you got to also make sure that that she, by trusting the end, how the energy feels, you should probably better tell her to trust herself because the energy may not be a good thing. So you don't want her to tr tell her to trust the energy. You want her to tell her to trust her own judgment and her what it is that she's feeling. That'll be a lot better for her to do that. And then you can go in and you can help her out. Okay. What are you typing? I am responding. Okay. And we have a new caller on the line. It's Melinda. Um, Come on? No, Melinda. A new listener. Okay. Let me do that. Yeah. Hello? Hello. How are you? Hello. You're on the air live with the Hora Z. Hey, how are you tonight? I'm just wonderful. How are you? I am good. Could be a little bit better, honestly, which is why I'm calling in. Okay. What can I do for you? So, um, I started this job about two and a half years ago, and ever since I started working there, um, I said something, excuse me, following me around at work. Okay. Um, it does not feel friendly. Um, I have sensed things in the past, you know, other places. Usually they give me um, either a sense of peace or they give me this pit in the bottom of my stomach. And I have learned to trust my instinct. Okay. Um, I am going to be moving into the house where I work. And the feelings of this spirit has been getting worse. It follows me around. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's breathing down the back of my neck. Um, it has followed me home. I know this. Okay. And what's interesting is I hired a new employee, and without me even saying anything, she told me that there's a male spirit there. Um, she has talked to him. He said his name is Bill, and he... Um, he keeps saying 1950s to her, that he died in the 1950s at a drive-in theater. He was um, in the car with a prostitute, and she stabbed him, is what he told her. Hmm. And he follows me around because I remind him of his wife. That happens a lot. Yeah, it, it happens a lot. And he may be trying to repair something. Uh, yeah. By the same token, you said that it doesn't feel very good, so he may be angry yeah. with that person as well. You know, so um, this does happen a lot when a spirit may mistake you for somebody else, especially mm -hmm. one that's caught in a time in a time frame or a time loop, if you will. And I know this sounds rather sci-fi, but what I mean by a time loop is that they're in a repetitious type of a thing, which basically means that this particular person did not just. Um, um, you know, die at the hands of this particular person, they must have did something to cause that. And right. that basically means that he wasn't a great person to begin with, you know, so... Right, and that's why, I do, you know, I feel like I can't trust him. I feel like 
um, it's very, it's very um, creepy to me. And, I, you know, I don't always get creeped out when I feel that there's spirits around around me. Mm. Um, but there are you certain? quite a few times where, you know, I just feel all of a sudden I get this, like, feeling in the pit of my stomach. And then I feel like he's breathing down the back of my neck. Mm. And even when I ask him to leave me alone, sometimes he doesn't leave me alone. Sometimes he does. Um, my boss was actually just out um, fixing the house, and he sent a text message off of his phone to my boss's wife saying, out of school, going to the movies, see you later. And according to my new employee, that was the last thing that he said to his wife when um, he went to the movie theater with this prostitute, and she killed him and robbed him. Mm, I see. So uh, this is a very lecherous spirit is what that is. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, are you sure you want to move into the house where this person is? Um, I would like I, I was actually going to give you a call this week and see if you would come and cleanse and bless the house before we move in. Well, I can clean them out, and uh, sure, I'd be more than willing to do that. Why don't you give us a call, and we'll set up something, okay? Okay. Where are you and, located? Uh, I want to thank you also, too, for um, the tea that you made for my son. Um, it definitely healing. Good, okay. good. Good, I'm glad. I wanted, to, I wanted to thank you for that, and I will uh, give you a call tomorrow. I'd also like to set up something for me to sit down for a personal session with you, if that's possible. Sure. And hey, just give us a call, and we'll set things up for you, okay? And don't All worry right. about thank things. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you for calling in. I appreciate it. All right. I look forward to talking to you in person. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Awesome. Well, that's good. That happens a lot where a spirit may mistake someone for someone else. <clears throat> Remember, we, in our bodies, we like to believe that uh, we are so far apart, but there are different types of people and different people who look like someone else. Now, you may, uh, you may even be related to this particular person that he thought he knew or connected to them in some way, shape, or form. That happens quite often. Um, you can't, uh, before you do actually make the decision to go in there, I would like to, to see if I can just fix things for you and, uh, make sure that you don't get followed around because that could be quite traumatizing. Okay. So it, it should be fine. Uh, we just have to convince this person that you, know, you got the wrong person. It's not who you're, who you think it is. Okay. That's pretty interesting actually. Yeah, but he wasn't a great person to begin with, to be out with a prostitute and then try to get back with his wife. Hmm. Really? <laughs> okay. All right, this next question is from Natalia. And they ask, Please thank Ahura for his response. It is useful to me. It has been said to me that those spirits are just idle, especially during times when my partner is feeling very sad or angry. I always know when they are coming, she gets a terrible headache and she goes to sleep within an instant. Shortly after I try to touch her, she pulls away. If her eyes are open, I can see them looking through her eyes. If they happen to see me, they become angered. And on different occasions, they have tried to make her harm herself. It hmm. is, is, is that a frustrated or angry spirit and how can we get rid of those? Sorry for the lengthy details. Well, the main thing is to see if we can get that particular spirit to not occupy that person uh, those can also be um, different personalities of this person I don't mean like multiple personalities what I mean is that these can be different astral beings that because obviously your your uh, partner has a habit of leaving her body and what happens is that an astral being can from time to time limited limited kind of get into that person's body or look through it they can't really make it do anything but they can you know and if you can see them they can actually cause a reaction and basically if your friend has any uh history of drugs or drinking or things that would make her leave her body or lose her senses or things like that She's leaving herself wide open for an astral attack, and that's exactly what that is. Uh, so you need to make sure that she's grounded. This uh, A loss of grounding can also happen when the person is doing something that is against their basic nature, or basic what it is that they really feel on the inside. 
you know, so you might uh, see if you can talk to her and find out when, what she feels like before she goes to sleep or what she felt like before she went to sleep on those times that you had those episodes where she just pushed you away or whatever. You can see one of those uh, entities on the inside of her. You might take some time to really do a thorough investigation of a timeline. What happened just before? You know what's happening during, but what happened just before and right after? And find out if uh, she has done things like leave, left her body. Usually, uh, when you're going into the astral realm, there is a trade-off. That's the whole nature of the astral realm. You can't go into the astral realm without there being something that is traded. And that could be just time. It could just be energy. What's her energy like when she's awake? Does she get tired very, very easily? Has there been some muscle tone loss? Is there some wasting and loss of energy? Has there been uh, moments that she said that she felt you know, nauseous just for no apparent reason? Or maybe getting a metallic taste in the back of her mouth? Or You have to ask these questions. And if you do that, you'll be an active participant in what it is that you know, you're both are going through. Okay, but uh, yeah, sounds like some deep uh, spiritual inferences, particularly if your friend is also psychic uh, and she doesn't really have a grasp on it or a control of it. You know, it could just be doing things all on its own. Sounds like she does have some history or some connection to someone who else, someone else who may be medium, have medium ability in her family because it's very limited. So ask some questions and then get back to me. I'd be interested in knowing what the answers are. All right, ready for some more? Yep, I'm ready. This question is from Carrie. She asks, some very old houses seem to have a personality of their own. Is mm -hmm. this a mixture of all the people who have lived there? Or does the structure take on a kind of life on its own with the energy of many lives moving through it? Yes. To all of the above? To all of the above. Both are valid, and both can contribute to, uh, you know, kinetic or psychokinetic energy in the home. Yes, definitely that. Uh, if you, you live in a home over a period of time, the home takes on the personality of the people that are occupying it. By the same token, there could have been spirits and all of the people that have occupied that have steeped into the, or seeped into the walls and the foundation of this place, giving it a personality you know, or multiple personalities. So yeah, yes to both of your questions. Definitely that. You know, when people say that they hear the house settling, it's really funny when you hear someone say that, well, the house is just settling, and the house goes, Rah! it's just, <laughs> just the house settling. No, it's not necessarily the house just settling, it's the house actually making a sound. It's kind of creepy. You know? <laughs> you know, there are some temples that are known and thought of to be alive because they are alive. And they will do things to protect themselves. They will also do things to preserve themselves. For instance, I started a thought a while ago, and uh, I, this is a thought that I knew of and knew how to do many, many years ago. And it, it's you need a table, and uh, we'll talk about that a little later. You need a table, and if you establish a certain thought on that table, whatever it is that you've established, the thought that you've established on that table will always be able to materialize or be always able to manifest itself. Well, the same thing goes for a house or a home or a building. There are certain buildings that collect energy and that en energy becomes part of the molecular structure of the walls. So the very essence of the energy is the essence of the building. You can't really separate them. And if you do it in the right way, even, even you will be preserved by that building. Okay, or whoever is occupying that building would be preserved. The same way as if you uh, steep a thought into a table, that table will be used for that particular thing and will propagate that particular thing. It will always be able to manage. I used it for food so that there would always be food on my table. And because I did that thought, there is always food on my table, you know. And you can do the same thing. You just have to make sure that it things are that your thought is magnetized and your table is magnetized and in tune with the thought that you're trying to establish. It takes a, a specific action and it also takes a very deliberate action. You know, so um, yeah, definitely, all of the above. You're absolutely correct. Good observation. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, right. what else do you got? Last one. If a human body is donated to a medical teaching facility, does the spirit remain while that body is being used? Does some remnant of that person remain behind, behind at the facility because of it being worked with there? And what is the difference between a person's spirit and mana? Down. Mana is energy. That's exactly what mana is. A person's spirit is a person's spirit. And uh, if the person's body is there, no, the spirit doesn't uh, necessarily. The spirit has been separated from the body. But does the body take on characteristics? Well, of course the body takes on characteristics. You know, it's, it's that person's body. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's attached to that person. They, they, and, you know, I doubt seriously that any spirit wants to sit around and watch themselves be dissected <laughs> and used for a... Uh, a teaching experiment unless they're just kind of into that kind of thing when they were living there's a possibility but uh, yeah of course the body takes on the characteristics of the person that was inhabiting it that's the whole point um, as far as does the spirit hang around they do sometimes they do sometimes and sometimes they get quite uh, reactive about it and cause things to happen other times, no. There's nothing to see there. You know, more than likely they just want to move on to their life. And if they get stuck someplace, then there are people like myself that can help them move across. And there's some wonderful people that help them, you know, move to where it is that they're supposed to. And if they make the choice to stay, that's totally up to them. So definitely, yes, uh, there are some instances where a spirit will wait and uh, they don't necessarily plan on watching themselves be donated to a uh, cadaver farm or a uh, you know, medical facility for experimentation. But I can tell you for a fact that there are lots of spirits in hospitals. Oh boy, lots. Over many, many years. Hope that helps you out. Cool. Okay. okay, is that it? Oh, we just have a response from Indigo. Okay. She says, give thanks, I will keep tracking them. A lot of what you said has been said to me by uh, her guardian, who I'm able to call on when she's having this experience while she sleeps. The guardian can sometimes push them out of the way so she can come through, which I give thanks for. Mm -hmm. Good. It's very good. Uh, we have another question from Felicia Murray. She sure. says, on my last ultrasound and OB appointment, they told me that there is an enlargement area in the brain is that is the baby going to be okay an enlargement area in the brain an enlarged area yeah, I know. in the brain yeah. i have to look at other references hold on yeah i think so you see because sometimes that that only happens as part of the development do you understand uh one part may be may grow a little faster than the other and I, I i think that it'll just catch up okay based upon what i can see from it um it should just catch up i'm looking right at it actually see the energy signature comes off as is pink so uh i'm definitely going to say that it's only it's part of a it's not growing Everything's not growing all at once. It's kind of developing, and and evidently the whoever did the ultrasound kind of caught them in midstream midstream of growing. So let me know yeah the next time you have an ultrasound, you know, in a couple of months or whenever, uh, how far along are you? Maybe second second trimester? Is that where you are now? I don't know. And uh, if so, let me know the next time you get an ultrasound and see if there's any difference, okay? All right. Um, that is it for questions okay. so far. Uh, All right. That's I'm fine. Sure we'll hear back from Felicia. That's later. fine. What's your time like? It is 8.45. Okay. So I got 15 minutes to talk to you about <laughs> wind magic. Okay. Um, basically... Uh, as we know, there are five different elements. Okay, the element that we're speaking about tonight is the wind. 
how to get in contact with your WEN. Now, there's some basic things that you can do, and I'll give you all a little bit of homework so you can go out and, you know, find some supplies. If you can find a shell, or you can find a feather, or you can find a flute for those of you that are musicians, or you can find something that represents the WEN to you. You might even get a ribbon and tie it at the end of a string, okay, or at the end of a, a stick, okay, a nice long ribbon. Pick something that's going to be a suitable color for yourself, okay? And uh, uh, and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this kind of two parts so that we can continue some things next week before we go to the next Before element. Hold on a second. Um, it's important for you to understand this. When you're dealing with the wind, you're dealing with a sentient being. You're not dealing with just something that blows all the time. You're really dealing with a personage. Okay, the wind is very, very smart, is very, very intelligent, and very, very sensitive. Okay, so before we even approach the throne of the wind, what we're going to do is have a proper, proper regard for the wind. So when you, you are going to try to contact the wind, or hope that the wind will speak to you, or even grace you with its presence, because okay? it always does because we're, we're breathing, understand this about the wind. Once you've opened a relationship with the wind, you must always honor it. You don't get to forget the wind. Okay? You don't get to slight the wind. And you don't get to make light of what the wind can do. All of the elements are equal in power. And they are all essential to our life here on earth. So when you approach the wind, approach it with some level of sacredness, approach it with some level of respect, and understand that once you have a relationship with the wind or any of the elements that we will be discussing throughout this particular segment of uh, education, you must do something to let the wind know that you're willing to open a dialogue with it or you're willing to have a relationship with it and let it know that you're willing to assist it. And you know, once you have a relationship with the wind, you'll get roaring mad about these chemtrails and you'll also, you know, uh, want to do something, something to assist the wind, just like you will want to assist fire or, or water or earth or lightning. So we're going to do some things. Uh, I'll continue this with this next week. Um, I'm going to show you how to use a flute or a recorder, if you will, or a flute or a shell to make a sound. The wind really appreciates sounds, especially good sounds. Okay. So we'll start there next week. I'm going to see what this is about. What is it here? Oh, we're just uh, in response. Uh, Seth says hello. Hello, Seth. Felicia says she's due July 29th. July 29th? Mm -hmm. Okay, so she's third. So, okay, good. Good, let me know what else. Uh, if I don't know if they're going to do another one, but if they do, I'd be interested in knowing. So give me a, give me a shout out, okay? Because I, I still say that it has to do with growth. Okay? And Michelle Ayot says she's just having a hard time listening to our feed. Okay. That's just okay. Well, you'll also be able, for those of you that may be having a hard time listening to the feed, you'll be able to uh, hear the, see the show in its entirety because I put every show up every week. Okay. Like we have the one from last week and you'll be able to have the one from this week as well. Okay. So no problem. Uh, we're doing the best that we possibly can uh, with what it is that we have. Those of you that lo would like to see us with better equipment so that we can do a better feed and a better show, uh, you, you can always go to the uh, Ask the Unicorn site and you can make a donation. <coughs> and any donations that we get from Ask the Unicorn or the Way of the Unicorn will be do donated exactly to the show and will be used for the show. Okay. While I'm on that particular uh, subject, I want to talk uh, a little bit again, and Seth, this is uh, for you. Um, Seth Roberts is uh, uh, directing a film that is called Frostbite, that I'm in, um, and other very fine actors, uh, produced by Alan Dillingham and uh, Killatainment Films, or Killatainment Entertainment, 
Kilotainment bill. Kilotainment bill. And, uh, bills. and uh, there is a, a campaign on um, Indiegogo that you can go to you know, help out for those of you that are into film and into independent film. Frostbite is a very good film. It's something very new and interesting. And uh, it's definitely in the sci-fi genre, but a little different from what you might expect. And uh, definitely got some great talent to it. So please go and see if you can uh, support the independent film network, especially here in Maine, because uh, we are trying to make something happen here. Those of us that are into the, inter the uh, independent film market and the independent film field are trying to make something wonderful happen here on the East Coast and in Maine for the people that are not uh, gifted with lots of money. <laughs> So you might help us out. We really would appreciate it, okay? Uh, now, uh, I'll say some other things as well. It's really important to uh, help out those of us that work really, really hard in doing things uh, when it comes to, to the entertainment field, music, whether it be music or film or art or anything like that. Because uh, the scientists have screwed up everything. Politicians have screwed up everything. Government has screwed up everything. It's up to us artists and those people that are gifted. So again, like every show, I am going to call out to those people that have gifts, to those people who are artists, to those people who are intuitive, and those people that have psychic and telepathic gifts. We need to start looking for each other and find each other and start supporting each other, okay? As far as I know, the war is on, and that war is light and darkness, and we really need to make an identification. And if you're going to be fighting for light, then fight for light. Stand and be counted. Don't sit there silent and letting darkness happen and saying, well, you know, there's nothing we can do about it. There is always something that you can do about it. Make sure that you're standing to be counted. You have to believe in something or you have to at least be willing to stand behind something that you believe or someone in your family believes in. You know, remember, there's some good people out there whose shoulders that we are standing on and whose lives were dedicated so that we could have some level of freedom. And that includes vets. That includes uh, those people who are in the, the social and um, people services, those people that are in the health services, those people who are in the intuitive field and the telepathic and psychic field. All of us have a place in the healing arts. We need to start looking for each other and we need to start supporting each other and start finding each other. Don't go sending all of your money to these associations that will never give any money to the people. They will pick and choose who they want the money to go to and then tell those people who really need it that they have to jump through hoops. No. Find your people. Find those people that are doing something grassroots and dedicate your money to them. Invest in them. Make sure that they are getting a shot. Okay? I don't care if someone went to Harvard school or some big college that you, you know, like, uh, oh, oh, wait, there's a little girl who really wants to go to college, but she can't because her daddy's a jerk, but I won't go into that. But she can't go to college because it's costing her like $45,000 just to get into this school, which she'll probably wind up paying for for the rest of her life. I even read an, art of, read an article where this woman, her school loan was $45,000. She paid $62,000 of it on it and she still owes $62,000. How is that possible? Okay. We need to send these giant colleges a message here. Okay. Seriously. And we need to send big business a message as well. We won't sit by and allow them to kill us. We won't sit by and allow them to starve us or choose for us what we can and can't have, you know, and we will not we will not sit and watch the little businesses, the, the private businesses, the mom and pop stores be pushed out by giant monsters like those Mark people. <laughs> Just to mention a few, you all know who I'm talking about. Okay, so let's start looking for each other. Let's start making our voices heard in government and making them understand something. This is our world. This is our country, okay? The reason that they're in office, so we've been told, is because we voted them in office. So we have a right to know what's going on, and nobody owns the sky, and they don't have the right to pollute it. And we really need to stand up and be recognized. And don't sit down, 
You have to be willing, if this is what it takes to stand in front of one of those jets and say, no, you're not poisoning my skies. You have to be willing to tell people like TSA, no, you're not going to treat me like baggage. No, you're not going to treat me like an animal. If an airport decides that they want someone that's going to mistreat you, don't patronize that airport. Don't patronize people that you know are going to treat you bad. Don't. Find a way around it. Think about it. We people who, who are common people that are artists, you know, we're good. We're good at what we do. We have to be twice as talented as people in three times as talented as people in Hollywood. You know why? Because we're broke. We're freaking broke. We put movies together using shoestring and tar that we found off of the street edge that got crumbled off. You know, I'd like to say we have a band-aid, but we don't. Usually we find a rag somewhere and treat the wound. <laughs> you know? So, you know, help each other out. And when you got a gift, quit hiding. Stop hiding. If you need help, give me a call. I'll help you develop your gift. Okay? I'm good at what I do. I had good teachers. All right. I'd like to thank you all for attending. What? I'm sorry. Hold it. I'd like to thank you all for attending the Way of the Unicorn. Ask the Unicorn. And Kazi says she has something. What do you got? I have one more question. Of course. What would you like? Um, Paco Roberts. Hello. He says, I have a question for discussion. I know what I believe, but I was wondering what you thought. Why, if we are spiritual beings, do we seek possessions of the material as the most important? Because we are human beings that live in a third dimensional reality, and the first level of spirituality is reality. You have to eat. Unfortunately, uh, the people that have determined that we have to pay so much for the things and that, that cause us to... Uh, do things like really hold on to, to physical um, objects or to obtain them so that we can buy a loaf of bread or so that we can buy uh, food for children or so that we can buy food for ourselves so that we can get clothes on our backs so that we can have electricity so that we can have water and all of that good stuff the powers that be just aren't as compassionate as we would be had we the money okay that's why because we have a human body, a physical body. If we didn't have a physical body and we all have this massive power that we can snap our fingers and get whatever we want at any point in time, this wouldn't be an issue. What we have to do is be more creative. We need to be a lot more creative. Maybe you don't have the fancy, you know, thing. Learn to deal with what it is that you have and make it work. Make it work to the best of your ability. You know, you don't, maybe you've had a table that you've had for 15 years that somehow mysteriously followed you all over the place, but at least you have a table. This table is not fancy, but you know what? I've had it for about 15, almost 15 years. Yeah. Still solid, still strong, so I still use it. Yeah, I'd love to have a really fancy table and that fancy equipment. But we need things. And unfortunately, some people lose sight when they need things. This is why. Remember, first level of spirituality, reality. And reality says in order to exist on this physical plane, we have to have physical things. Hope that helps you. Anything else at all? Uh, no. Are you just practicing to see how fast you can type? Uh, I'm working on setting an appointment up, actually. Okay. Well, that doesn't get done here. I know. Okay. We're, we're, doing, so, we're relaying. Messages. All right. So, I'd like to thank you all once again for coming to the show. I do hope to see you all next week, and uh, we will cover Wind Magic. Uh, in its entirety, I didn't depend on so many questions, but I'm glad that you all had the questions because I love answering questions. Um, just bring your notepad and everything so we can uh, I can give you all a thorough lesson on things. And please, ask your friends to watch the show. Uh, tell people about the show. The more popular the show becomes, the better, because then I can give people the right way of thinking instead of waiting for them to learn crap on Ghost Hunter.
<laughs> or with the Astro Boy. Oh yeah. Are they even on anymore? You know, I that, don't know. Uh, Ghost Adventures. They're looking for the next big paranormal thing. Whatever. I've been offered yeah. shows by. Yeah. Oh, that's another thing. Do you know what? <clears throat> I was uh, offered a show a couple of years ago, yeah. and they flew me down to Hollywood and everything. And they wanted really wanted to do a show. I was supposed to be the next big paranormal thing, and I turned them down. I turned them down because they wanted to call my show the Black Exorcist. Could you believe that? <laughs> I just had to say that. <laughs> it was amazing. Baseball. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, let's not let them learn things uh, from shows like that. Because they say the most ridiculous things. Anyway, hope to see you all next week. Thank you for coming to the show. I've enjoyed this show, and I'll see you all next week. Are you going to blow your horn? No. Oh, okay. I'll blow it next week. All right. See ya. Night-night.